Howdy folks, Degenerate here. Today, I'm going to be releasing the Blind Cave Tetras into their new tank. They've cleared their four week quarantine. Uh, they had a little bit of ick, they got over that. Um, it's been a couple weeks now, everything seems to be good. No parasites, no visible signs of any diseases, so it's time to let them go to their new home. These blind cave tetras are pretty fascinating little fish. They're a morph of the Mexican tetra, and as the name implies, it comes from Mexico. The Mexican tetra is a pretty drab looking tetra. But millions of years ago, some of these Mexican tetras got trapped in some underwater caves, and over that time developed some unique characteristics. Most notably, their lack of eyes and their lack of pigment, which gives them that dull pink color. The blind cave tetras we see in the hobby today were all collected from one cave in Mexico, and ever since then have been bred in commercial facilities throughout the world. In this video, we'll go over how I built this tank and the steps I used to do it. Stay tuned. This is a 90 gallon fish tank. Before I did anything, I installed an under gravel filter slash slow moving plenum with two short airlift tubes, one on this side, one on the other. The filter plates came from Amazon and they snapped together. Everything was hot glued together. Other than that, I plan on using pool filter sand and aquarium gravel as the substrate. The next part of this build, I chose to use a cement board as the roof of the cave. A cement board is traditionally used as a surface for installing tile or stone in wet areas like a shower or a sauna. It's permeable, designed to be submerged, and is rigid, which is why I chose to use it. I cut it to a rough size and I rinsed it really well. Left like this, this stuff will leach minerals into the water column, which is also why I'll be sealing it later with dry lock paint. This stuff is relatively easy to work with. It's just cement held together with two pieces of fiber mesh on each face of the board. You score it with a knife and you snap it along the cuts. Next, I use stainless steel threaded rods as the support legs for the cement board. I use stainless so it wouldn't rust underwater and for its strength. I then use Sculpey clay, which is an oven-baked polymer clay, to cover the threaded rods. The idea is to mold the Sculpey into a pillar shape which is a stalagmite and a stalactite that have grown together, forming a pillar or a column. Um, these polymer clays are all pretty much the same, a little bit different, so make sure you look at the instructions. But the idea is that they're soft and pliable until you bake them in an oven at low temps, and that removes the plasticizer, making them solid. Once I was happy with the designs, I baked the clay in the oven. I did this for all three rods, and then made stalagmites and stalactites. I pre-drilled holes for the threaded rods and secured them to the cement board. I used stainless steel washers and nuts to do this. I then used the pond safe waterfall foam to create a rocky cave texture for the roof of the cave. I placed the stalactites into the foam before it was cured. I also used another can of foam to complete the rocky look. I used foam on top of the roof of the cave too to create a ridge. In hindsight, I used way too much foam. It made the whole structure buoyant. And I had to use extra stones to weigh everything down. And I could have achieved the same look with less foam. After the foam cured, I used an X-Acto knife and pliers to further shape it. Then everything got painted with dry lock masonry paint. Dry lock is a pond safe paint that can be tinted to a range of colors. I chose beige. I also painted the cement board and pillars before I placed any of the foam. Dry lock is a pretty thick paint and has a sandy texture. I gave the whole cave structure three coats, top and bottom, and I let the paint dry in between each coat.
I then took a dry brush and put some brown paint all over the entire cave structure. I did this by mixing in quickrete cement dye into the dry lock paint. These dyes come in a variety of colors and I chose brown. You can get them at your local hardware stores. I went over the whole cave structure and I gave it a nice brown texture with the brush. After everything was completely dry, I fit it into the 90 gallon tank. Here we go folks. As you can see, everything fits nicely in the 90 gallon. Everything is ready for scaping. I'll be adding pull filter sand and aquarium gravel to the substrate, along with the stalagmites. I also purchased this aquatic light and made a sculpy decoration for around it. I'll show that to you in a few seconds. Here's a quick view of the top. I'll be scaping this as well. Here we go. This is the final build. In here with the blind cave tetras, our Colombian red and blue tetras, several Gara Spolota, a bristle nose pleco, and a gold garami. That's the entire build. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.